here we are with another uh, control framework and spe especially this framework is related to IT. Uh, it is very well known by the name of COVID framework and the institute which has uh, uh, developed this framework is the ISACA, uh, again a very big and reputed organization. Um, uh, which is which stands for Information System Audit and Control Association. Uh, COBIT, which uh, uh, which means that Control Objective for Information Related Technology, um, is basically one of the framework which is used for managing all the IT activities. This is most commonly used and most famous one because it is very flexible. It can um, you can embed some certain other IT framework within this framework in order to ensure that there is proper governance uh, in terms of IT. Uh, every organization has uh, IT systems and no, even as an individual these days, we cannot expect ourselves without being part of the IT digital uh, revolution. So how come an organization can be, they have ERP system, they have different apps in use, they have different uh, um, uh, machineries which are using uh, IT, the information flows within the organization through IT channels. Uh, therefore, it is very important that whenever we talk about control frameworks and control governance, we talk about IT as a very specific topic. So the COVID framework has five principle, uh, which is meeting the stakeholder needs. This is the one of the key principle, covering the enterprise end to end, which means because the information flows end to end. So covering the organization end to end, applying a single integrated framework, integrated framework because it, you can integrate other IT frameworks as well within the COVID. Enabling holistic approach uh, to be more realistic and separating governance from management. So it, it clearly defines what are the governing part of the controls and, and who are responsible to manage those daily control activities. Um, as we have said that uh, it, it is a single integrated framework, which means that in the there are certain other frameworks which can be used while using a COVID. So it is very much used in, 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 in the US where we have a strict SOX compliance that they use COVID as a framework in to ensure that the SOX compliance, that the companies are SOX compliance. So they integrate SOX compliance with the COVID in, in the SOX is basically financial control framework and financial control when we talk about we use systems ERP systems so we ensure that we have a robust uh, IT control framework within a place in order to ensure the integrity of financial data as well just to have a quick um, Understanding of what is the different be difference between COVID five, which was the old version, and uh, and COVID twenty nineteen, which is the new version. So there are many uh, differences, but we will just uh, stick to a few uh, high level one, the most significant one, and why there was a need first of all to have a revised version. The previous one was considered to be less flexible, so this one is more flexible and more generic. So more um, tools or more uh, frameworks can be used parallel to this one. Um, the COVID-5 uh, expands COVID-4, so which means that there was even an older version. And even in, in, in from COVID-4 transitioning to COVID-5, the standards, ISO standards and IT, IT, IEL standards were being incorporated. Uh, the 2019 is too generic, now comprehensive and flexible enough for any organization of any size to use a COVID framework. Uh, the One of the key uh, principal change uh, in, in COVID-5 in versus COVID-2019 is the, the, the five principles has been expanded to six now. So now there is one more, which is tailored to, en to enterprise needs. This is one additional um, governance um, principle, which has been incorporated in 2019. Uh, another key uh, element that has been 
that has been taken into account in COVID-2019 was to increase the um, their governance and management objective. When you when, when you look at the governance, the, the COVID framework, uh, they have defined that what are the objective from the governance aspect that you have to assure from the IT activities and what are the management related activities which are more related to process level objectives that you have to achieve in terms of governance. Uh, so it has been increased from 37 to 40. Um, so previously also there was uh, these governance and management framework but in the new one it has increased and it is being organized into five domains so which is reflected in the below picture. You don't need to have an expertise on all and how to apply for the CIE exam you just need to have basic understanding of COVID-5 and, uh, and, the, and the revised version in, in COVID-2019. Uh, the third uh, key element uh, and the difference between COVID-5 uh, transitioning to 2019 is the capability model. Basically, it's a model, it's a generic model which is being used for for ensuring that which level of maturity a certain uh, processes uh, is in right now. So if we want to assess that, uh, if, we, if we want to rate one to five and five being the best, uh, level so you can ascertain that which level your current IT processes are at the governance from the governance perspective so in COVID-5 it was uh, the old version of capability model and uh, now in, in COVID-2019 um, they have the latest version and the latest version is, is more, um, more explanatory and it defines uh, all the key elements and stages uh, by which you can assess your IT maturity of a certain uh, aspect of the IT or the entire IT through this model capability maturity model by using their, their latest version of capability maturity model in the 2019.